one of our own. She is a staff sergeant stationed here in JBSA at Fort Sam. She is an instructor and she has been serving uh, this community for a few years as a service member. She is a great asset to the Air Force and she is potentially going to change your life by the delivery of her story. Ladies and gentlemen, Staff Sergeant Wallace. How's everybody doing today? Good. good? All right, hopefully you learned something, um, some good takeaways from today. Like Sergeant Cortijo said, I'm not here to train you. So just get, get rid of that word, all right? I'm here to inspire you, hopefully to get you to look at things different, especially life. Um, just to tell you a little bit about my story. So first of all, I've been in the military 10 years. Um, I am a, a technical a training instructor. I work at Fort Sam, been working there for three years now. Love the job, absolutely love it. Um, and then I had a situation happen a couple years ago when I first got here that changed my life forever. Changed the way I thought about things, everything. Changed the way I dealt with people, um, my beliefs. It changed everything. And it just happened right in my lap, dropped right in my lap. And so Resilience was a big part of that to help me get through it. And there's also some other little tidbits that I'm gonna share with you that helped me get through it. Now, some of you might already be doing some of these things, but some of you may not, and it may make you, make you think a little bit, all right? Um, one thing that I want you to think about is when it comes to resilience, there's different levels. There's levels to it. I see a lot of Airman Basics. I love this audience because we got Airman Basics all the way up to Chief um, in here, even civilian counterparts. That's perfect because at the different ranks, as most of us know, I'm in the middle. I'm a staff sergeant. There's different levels to, that, to, to problems that may happen in your career, is it not? An 18-year-old might not have the bigger stresses as, as somebody who's a little bit older. And that, that's not always true, is it? Some people go through a lot of stuff when they're younger. Um, but as far as ranks, Airman basic responsibilities might not be as, well, they won't be as um, stressful as the chiefs. That's just a fact. It is when it comes to work. So I want you to look at the resilience in a couple different ways in that aspect. You got different levels with work, and then you got stuff that just happens in your life, okay? And you can't control that. Airman basic has nothing to do with getting cancer or your mom dying or your uncle dying, somebody important in your life leaving you. That kind of stuff has nothing to do with rank, does it? So that's why I'm the perfect face for that because this had nothing to do with work, not in the beginning at least, but it did affect me later when it came to that. So I want you to watch this video. So I had um, combat camera follow me throughout this time. They were lucky enough to catch me right in the, in the middle of what I was going through. I was already done with chemo and I was getting ready to um, get ready for my first surgery. So big surgery, never had surgery in my life. So that was kind of crazy. But they were able to capture everything. My, my emotions, my real emotions, um, how my family and my friends dealt with it, everything. They captured it on video. There was a, 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 a Airman's Magazine issue that came as well before that. They were snapping pictures. So everything kind of came together and made one big story. And so this is the product of it. And so I want you to pay close attention to some of the things that you see, because I'm going to address some of them throughout and then later. And then I'm going to top it off by telling you where I am today. So let me talk to you guys a little bit while this is trying to load a little bit. Um, I'm going to touch on a couple more things in this video, so I just want you to know that the combat camera thing happened through people that I met along the way, because I really want this video to load. I don't want any breaks in it. It's gonna mess up the effect. <laughs> so um, I met some of these people just through random people that came around me, that rallied around me. I didn't even know. You know, people are so genuine when, when things happen in their life. Sometimes it hits home, sometimes it doesn't, but they feel for you. That's where that sincerity comes into play. But um, I just met these people randomly um, through connections, and they just were so drawn to my situation, not because necessarily it happened to them. Um, the interesting part is the photographer, um, you may have heard his name, Staff Sergeant Vernon Young. It was on CNN, he was recognized on CNN. He was um, the military photographer of the year. 
that year, I think it was last year, his mother has um, breast cancer, so it hit home for him. He saw my picture on Facebook. I was trying, I was at a boutique, I opened another boutique downtown, um, and that boutique is called Her Story Boutique. That's where I got this name from, for the video, because I met that woman, I met Vernon through him, <clears throat> I mean through, uh, through her. And he just saw a picture of me on Facebook and was like, there's something about her that I need to know what's going on. I was completely bald, I had on this pretty little skirt that I had bought from her boutique or something like that and I tagged her in it and he saw the, he saw the photo. And he asked her if he could reach out to me after she told him my story and he said, I have to shoot her. And he just wanted to do a regular photo shoot. And it was nice because at that point I didn't have any hair. Um, I wasn't feeling great about myself because you know that's just something that's difficult to deal with when you're a female and you lose all your hair for no reason. So we did a photo shoot and he absolutely loved it. He started talking to his friends about me. That's where Combat Camera came into play. And they asked, he asked all of them, let's go ahead and, and, and try to make something so that we can shoot the video and we can put it out there because people need to see this. They need to see that a young woman in the military can make it. Because most of us are young right now, most of us are young when we, when we come in. And a lot of, I'm, a, I'm an instructor, I'm gonna tell the truth. This generation does not have the resilience level that they need to get through the rest of the ranks. That's just the honest truth. And they need to see stuff like this because it inspires them to, to just leave all that, that stuff that doesn't matter behind. Stop making a big deal out of little teeny things. That's what helped me with this, going through this situation. Because before I would stress about nothing. I would get anxiety, I'm like, oh God, the grass is too high, I need to cut it. You know, like just silly stuff. And so going through this made it so, I need to stop stressing about, about things that don't matter. I have to, or I need to, to tap into different levels of my resilience, all right? So I just wanted to, to uh, talk a little bit while that loaded, but we'll go ahead and play it now. She would sit down, she would cry. She would look at me, she would say, why me, why this, why that? Which made me start questioning, okay, what's gonna happen next? Am I gonna lose, you know, the love of my life? And, I never once cried in front of her at all. I mean, from the beginning, my wife was always there. So, to even picture myself, just me, my daughter going here, going there. Because we never ever go anywhere without Chantel. This can't be life. Not having to do everything without my wife. reality when de dealing with cancer. It would be devastating to me to have to look in the eyes and explain to her, your mom died, we need a two. It would be tough. Unfortunately, I won't have to have that conversation with my daughter. It 
hasn't always been easy at all. It's been plenty of times where this one over here has caught me just laying on the floor in a ball in the dark, crying. I mean, it was rough in the beginning. But at the end of the day, he would just come upstairs and say, babe, he would reassure me basically. You're gonna be fine. You're still beautiful. I think you're beautiful. And that helped a lot. So for sure, he was definitely my pillar in strength. My mother is the best thing walking next to him. Next to me, that is. Next to him. <laughs> she is so strong. I mean, and she does exactly what a mother, what you would expect your mother to do for you in a crisis. The minute I told her about the situation, she got a plane ticket and was out here. Hey, mom. Our friends, the ones we've met here, we haven't even known them a year, I think it's been, and they're like family. It showed that how strong a family is and how strong friends are when they reach out to you in the time of need. And I appreciate it, I'm sure she does too. I agree. I think one of the best things that have come from this situation is family, people coming together, and it really shows who's actually there for you. They've watched Samaya when we needed that, you know, when we needed them to, you know, when he wanted to take me out on a date, you know, so they've, they've helped a lot. You always wonder if you're gonna come out the same person that you did before you went under. Went in for surgery and came out the exact same person that I was before the cancer, which was vibrant, happy, laughing, telling jokes, the whole nine. First thing she said was the nurse that she had, that she looked like, was it Jennifer Hudson? Yeah. The nurse looked like Jennifer Hudson to her, so. That was her first joke, and if anyone, anyone that knows her knows that she thinks she's the funniest person and always makes jokes, so that's her thing. No, I am. And when that happened, I just knew that she's back. It was a great feeling. I just realized it wasn't a big deal at all. I was afraid that I was going to be extremely insecure and, you know, just not feel like a woman, you know, kind of like when I lost my hair. but. Physical features don't make you you. It's your personality, it's your spark, it's your spunk, um, it's your attitude. So when I came out and everything was fine, it was just like, well, that was easy. All right, so that is my Her Story video. Um, I made it so that people who are going through, it's not just about cancer. If you notice that we didn't talk a whole lot about that, it was more so about being there for each other. And um, in our case, being in the military, we, that's kind of what they instill in us, the wingman concept, right? We're supposed to try to be there for each other. Um, but I love this video because a lot has come from it. A lot of positive things have come from it. People I don't even know email me. I loved your video. I saw it on, on Facebook the other day. You know, I shared it. And then some people have contacted me. Hey, my doctor just found out she has, you know, whatever, this, that, and the third. And what do I tell her? What do I do? That's what I put it out there for. Because there's no roadmap to life, is it? Stuff happens, obstacles get in the way, and you just got to figure out how to get around it the best way you can. And so what I mean by that is resilience doesn't mean you have to be, you know, this tough person and, and get through it without crying, without falling, without getting down on yourself. And all of that happened to me during this time. I just figured out a way to, especially once it was over, you, you saw at the end of the video, I was like, oh, well, that was easy, really? No, <laughs> it wasn't that easy. But afterwards, because resilience you learn through experience, I know that if something like that were to happen again in my family or in somebody around me, I can deal with it better. I can help the people around me help them deal with it better. That's really what all of this is about, helping each other deal with certain things. 
It doesn't have to be as big as cancer. It could be something small, all right? So um, the big question is, how did I get through it? Resilience is how I got through it. Now there's different, I told you there's different levels to resilience. There's different stages of resilience. There's different things that come into play when it comes to that. But it's not ordinary, it's not extraordinary. It's something that is ordinary. You don't have to be Superman or woman to have resilience and to deal with big or small things, okay? It's not a trait. It's the process of adapting well in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, or significant sources of stress. Being in the military, we have a lot of significant sources of stress. Living life, we have a lot of significant sources of stress, don't we? Nobody has a perfect life. I don't care what people say. <laughs> it's not a Disney movie, all right? It's not a trait. It's something that you have to continue to build upon every single day. And we practice resilience every day. Just on the streets of San Antonio, we practice resilience, don't we? Somebody jerks out in front of you, what do you do? You might say some choice words. You might let them have it. All right, I'm gonna let them live today. Okay? Funny story, but it's not really that funny. But uh, after I got my, my phone call, because I was at work when I found out, um, the doctors nowadays, they tell you over the phone, like they ask you if you want to find out any kind of news over the phone. And so in my case, I said yes, because I wanted to know, okay? Because I went in for, for a lump that I found in December. So let me, let me go ahead and tell that piece. So let me tell you how quick this happened, okay? I got here in, I got to Fort Sam in 2013, August. I found the lump in December in, of that year. It was probably the size of a, no, I would say probably a nickel. It was about a nickel, but it wasn't where your breasts are. So I didn't think anything of it. It was kind of like up here, you know, like in the middle of your chest almost, which is a dangerous place, by the way, I found out to have something like that. But anyway, um, I didn't get it checked out. It didn't hurt. If I'm not in pain, I'm not sick, I'm not coughing, I'm not going to the doctor, I don't need to. Um, so I thought maybe it was a clogged milk duct because my child was, she was kind of young. She was probably 16 months or so. So I figured maybe it was a clogged milk duct that just got a little big on me. But being an instructor, is anybody, any former instructors in here or current? All right, awesome. So when you become a, an AT instructor, you have to go through BIC, which is a basic instructor course. So you have to learn how to be an instructor. There's a lot of things you gotta do before you can actually get on the podium. So when I got here, everything was kind of fast paced. I gotta go to BIC, I gotta do my internship, I gotta graduate my first class, okay? So that's what I was focused on. I was focused on my job. So I didn't go to the doctor, I didn't have time. Husband said, go to the doctor. And I said, listen, all right, I don't have time. I can't take off right now, I got my internship, I'm not redoing any of this. So I just kept moving. By February, that thing got to the size of a half dollar oh, maybe I need to go to the doctor. <laughs> but by that time, I had graduated my first class. So I waited a couple more weeks to kind of settle down. Then I went to the doctor. Shame on me, right? So I went and I went to see just my PCM at Fish Clinic and they checked it out. Doctor herself said, oh, it's probably nothing. It's probably a clogged milk duct. I had already Googled it, trust me. <laughs> I'm a Google nut, what's this? Let me Google it, see what it is. <laughs> I do that all the time. But she said the same thing. She's like, it's probably a clogged milk duct, no big deal. You're too young for it to be anything. I was 26, just turned 26. She said, but just in case, let me send you over to get it checked out, just to be sure. So she sent me to ultrasound. Now ironically, now I don't know if you know about the, the appointment system here, but you don't get specialty appointments right away, do you? A dermatology appointment, y'all, took me a month to get. I said, dang, I just want to go check out my pimples. That's it. The appointment was 20 minutes, okay? But it took a month to get. I got this appointment the next day. There was a broken appointment. And they were like, oh, wait, wait a second. We can get you in tomorrow, 10 o'clock. I said, okay, cool. Went to the appointment. Nurse did the ultrasound and everything. She said, I'm going to be right back. And she left the room and brought the doctor back in. And the doctor checked it out. And she said, you know what? Um, let's go ahead and do a biopsy on this. And I'm looking at her like, what? Because I know what a biopsy is. I'm medical. 
they're talking about getting in there, taking, taking the tissue out. Okay, so I got worried at that point. Anytime a doctor wants to do a biopsy the same day, I'm like, oh no, it's over for me. So, but I still didn't think it was cancer. I just didn't. Um, so they did the biopsy three days later, sitting at work about to start. I just started my new class, my second class. It was like their third day, got the phone call sitting at my desk. Okay, doctor just said, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but you got breast cancer, it's breast cancer. And so I said, all right. It didn't quite settle in yet. You know, when you get big news like that, you don't really know what to do with it. So I said, all right. Hung up the phone, called my mom, and then called my husband. Lost it after that. So what do you do when you have a coworker sitting at the desk crying? Especially one like me. I don't cry like that. I just don't. <laughs> I'm one of those people. I don't like crying in front of people, you know, because, not because of any, like, weakness or anything. I just, I don't like to bother people with my problems early, unless I need it. So I'm sitting at the desk bawling my little eyes out and another coworker comes around the corner and she just kind of stops. Like, what do I do? Have you ever been that coworker? Catch somebody crying at the desk? They walk past you quickly with their hands in their face crying. What do you do? Do you really? You stop? That's good. How many people walk by? Be honest. Depending on who it is, sometimes you got a coworker that cries every day. <laughs> they changed the schedule. What am I supposed to do? They canceled my leave. You're like, oh Lord, she's crying again. And you just keep walking. <laughs> but um, it's some people that you know, you're like, if she's crying, there's something wrong. If he's crying, there's gotta be something wrong. Now, no matter what, we should stop. But we don't always stop because we might be that person, kind of like with the whole Sark thing that's going on right now. We don't want to be that person to get involved in something and open up an, a can of worms and now you got to deal with it, really, because you opened it. All right, so she stopped. She, you know, she was kind of awkward with it. They're there, like, what's going on? You know, we're instructors. We don't do all this crying. Like, what's going on here? And so I told her and she was shocked, but she was very, you know, loving about it. Went home, dealt with the emotions, all right? Fast forward it. Next. This is what happened next, okay? Let's start off with this game of, uh, you guys know this game, right, Jenga? Love this game. It's fun, isn't it? Especially when you play teams, when you got four people, and you're like, all right, it's your turn to pull the block. Then you pull the block, then they pull the wrong block, and you're like, yeah, let's pull the block. Like, check the blocks first, you know? Anyway. So life is like a game of Jenga. I have no idea how this concept came to me. I was just sitting down like, what am I going, how am I going to explain this to them that's a little bit different from the whole bouncing back and all that stuff that we keep hearing? Jenga. Life is just like Jenga. You start out with a sturdy and firm foundation. Now us being in the military, we have that for the most part. We, let's, let's assume that we all have that because you know, we don't have to pay for medical. We don't have half the issues that you know, our, our friends you know, that are not in the military might have. Correct? For the most part, that's, what I, that's how I think. You know, um, so we start off sturdy. And then what happens in the game? You start pulling blocks out. Things start happening in your life. Things you can't control, right? Some of the stuff you can't control. Um, maybe you didn't get that promotion that you wanted, that you studied so hard for, and your name went on the list. Too soon? <laughs> Too soon, <laughs> it's okay. You can study and make it next year, right? Um, maybe you didn't get the assignment that you wanted. Maybe you just got orders to deploy and you were planning on going home around that time. All right, maybe those things started to happen. Either way, it starts to shake your foundation just a little bit, little stuff. And then more things start happening. Things get a little shaky. Y'all know this part of Jenga. Blood pressure is up here. You better pull the block that I tell you to pull. <laughs> because if you mess this game up for me, okay, you buying everybody around. Anxiety and everything starts to take over. One more block could knock this whole thing down. In life, one more thing could happen. Think about it. You, I've been in a, I've been PCS four times. There's always been um, 
somebody in my section where just it seems like things always happen to them. Like they always get the short end of the stick. It could be you, okay? And you're just like, man, if one more thing happens to that person, they're going to lose it. I just know it. You know? And then it happens. That last block that you like, I knew it. If, this, if something else happened, it's going to fall. Everything falls down. You fall apart. But the thing that you got to realize, though, slide please, about falling down is that we all do it. It happens sometimes. All right? It's about getting back up. Put the blocks back together. When I got the phone call, that changed my whole entire life, my family's life, because cancer affects everybody. It does. My, f my friends could barely handle it, my family, okay? My father couldn't handle it at all. His mother had it. She died from it. That's the only family history I have of it. He ran the other way. And I know you're like, what? Some people can't handle things. You would think it's common sense to be there for somebody around that time, but like I tell my students all the time, common sense is not so common. It's not. They do some crazy stuff, and I'm not trying to get on y'all. I know you got some tech schoolers up in here. They're probably like, dang, you just all over us. It's true. <laughs> all right, common sense is not so common these days. He ran the other way, he couldn't handle it. I can't necessarily fault him for that, all right? I hope you paid attention to the video because I'm going to go back to it a little bit too. But first, let me tell you how I got through it, all right? This is one of the, the things that I just want to, this is what I did, okay? Make connections. Some of y'all are going to make connections in here today. If you've been to ALS, you've made connections. BMT, you made connections. I'm still friends with some people that I, I'm best friends with people I went to BMT with. Maid of honor in my wedding, all kinds of stuff. She's, she's gonna be here in two weeks. I have my last surgery in two weeks. Real quick, okay? My last surgery is in two weeks and she'll be here. My friend from basic training. Make connections. Tap into those people that you know are gonna be there for you. Everyone else might come around too, people you never met. You'd be surprised. Strangers will help you out, okay? But you wanna tap into the people that you know are gonna be there for you. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Cause situations like what I went through, you need it. Some situations you don't need a whole rally of people, that's true, but you gotta have somebody to talk to. Somebody, all right? People who are introverts, they have issues with, you know, talking to a lot of people about their problems, that's fine. But you gotta have one person that you can call in a time of need. The next thing, find the silver lining. Whatever is going on in your life, whatever is going on in the situation, find the positive in it. How do you find the positive in getting cancer? I lost hair, my hair everywhere. Chemo, I lost hair everywhere. I didn't have to shave, y'all, <laughs> for five months. Men and women can, can relate to that. You don't have to shave every day? Man, you know. I didn't have to shave no legs. My arms were baby soft. I mean, it was great. <laughs> no hair on the head. It was summertime during when I had that. I was getting hot flashes and everything. I didn't have no hair, y'all. It was perfect. Quick wipe. <laughs> because I lost my eyebrows, I learned how to do makeup. I was a YouTuber, sitting on YouTube, looking at makeup tutorials. So I learned how to do makeup real good. Um, and then, um, and sometimes that can be hard. That can be a hard step to, to, to try and tap into, trying to find the positive in whatever's going on. One of the larger things on a broader scale for me was, with finding the positive was I took somebody else's place that couldn't handle it. I'm a believer. God chose me instead of a child. Now, obviously, you know, kids still get cancer, but I felt like I took somebody's spot that couldn't handle it at the time. Because I had a lot of people hit me up and say, 
I just don't know how you got through it. I could never. I would have fell apart immediately. That's, that's, you know, normal. Accept the change. I had to accept that. No hair. I had to accept that my life was never going to be the same again. I had to get a double mastectomy, remove both breasts. I had to accept that. 26 years old. What about my bathing suits? Silver lining. Well, I can get past put in them. That way I can still shop at Victoria's Secret and get my bathing suits. All right, so you have to find the silver lining and accept change. This is one of the hardest steps to do. All right, next. Next thing I did, continue to work on your goals. I had to act like nothing was going on. That's what I did. I went to work and even as sick as I was sometimes, my husband had to tell me, you need to sit down somewhere. Why are you trying to go to work and you just threw up last night? You know you can't go. Hey, listen, this is my job. This is what they brought me here for. I'm in the middle of a class. I need to graduate them. I don't want nobody else teaching my class. It's my class, all right? I'm very devoted to what I do with these students. This is my product that I'm putting out there. And I have to show them that I can't let, little, I can't let it get me down. If I can go to work and I feel like I, I'm well enough to go to work, I'm going to work, all right? The goals that I had in place, I still worked on it. School, everything. It took me longer to finish school, you know, a couple extensions, but I finished it. I finished my little classes I was taking. Continue to work on your goals. Use whatever your goals are to keep things into perspective. I have everything to live for. My child, my family, everything. I'm not just gonna lay down and let, let something like that, you know, stop me from what I'm doing. All right, so that's what I did to keep things in perspective. I did these little events and stuff like that to help raise money for the Breast Cancer Foundation. That's what I did. I told you I'm a believer. This was hard, because I was angry in the beginning. Why me? Before I found the silver lining, why? Why? Everything was going great. I was at an assignment that I loved. I worked with people that I loved. This job is fun. I'm doing something with my life, feeling like it, you know, I'm trying to do what I want to be when I grow up, you know. Um, but I had to tap back into my faith and I started realizing that, okay, everything happens for a reason. All these people, all those friends you saw in the video, I feel like they were strategically placed in my life at this time to help me through what I needed to get through. Because those people came out of nowhere. I got tight with them fast. It was crazy, the connection. And again, I PCS a lot, but you just, when you PCS, you just connect with certain people, don't you, at every single base. And you just like, man, it's bittersweet when you PCS, when you deploy and all that stuff, because you got to separate again. Those people really helped me. Um, and so that's what helped me keep my faith. I started realizing things are happening like this for a reason. How I ran into Kenyatta out of nowhere, the, the owner of the, the boutique downtown. I went there because I had a, a retired friend. She was like, hey, come to this boutique opening. You know, she has a great story. And I was like, okay, cool, I like shopping. And I went, and I have nothing to do. I was on con leave. Met Vernon through her off a Facebook picture. You see how that works? Sequence of events, everything happens for a reason. So that kept my belief. Next. This is the most important thing. Smile. Laugh. Like he was saying on the video, I love to laugh. I love to tell jokes. Um, that's kind of how I keep you know, my students' attention you know, in, in class. I'm animated. I would talk with my hands. All right? So I just smiled throughout the time. Not a fake one. Sometimes I couldn't. I just couldn't. I, I'm not feeling good today. But most of the time, I tried to keep my inner spark. And so this is the important part. Everybody falls, but it's about getting back up. OK? Now, the video. Notice that it's titled Chantel Tebow. I wasn't going to touch on this, but I'm going to get real on y'all real quick. Because life is not pretty. I said it before, it's not a Disney movie. The ending is not always sweet. 
Half of the people in that video aren't even around anymore, including the husband. We didn't make it. We didn't make it through, all right? So I had to deal with that right after my second surgery. I was going through a divorce, okay? With him, went, with the name, went the people, that's what I say. But what did I do? I accepted the change and I found the silver lining. Because the silver lining was what? They were there because they were supposed to be there when they were supposed to be there. And when they left, I had to accept that because it's not my plan. It's fine. I'm fine. Me and him are fine. It was time to go. You see what I'm saying? He was there when he was supposed to be there because he was supposed to be there. But it doesn't mean that everything has to be shimmer and shine. The story is still writing itself. And that's, I'm here today as Sergeant Wallace. Still fine, still dealing with stuff. But I'm okay. That's the, that's the end story. All right? So hopefully me telling my story, my sharing my story with you inspired you a little bit. Don't focus on the cancer. Focus on whatever problem that you have right now going on in your life or whatever it might be to come and just start to prepare yourself. Try to have a, a more clear head when you're dealing with certain things, when things come up. Just kind of take a step back and say, okay, am I gonna freak out about this or am I gonna <laughs> find the silver lining? All right, things happen. EBR changes. Most of us had to be resilient when it came to that. It's all right. It changed. There's always changes. When we had to change from, from the BDUs to these, kicking and screaming, didn't want to give them up. But I still wear them when I go paintballing. That's the silver lining. <laughs> you know, so do what you need to do to get through things, but don't be afraid to reach out and touch the person. No, let me, let me back up. Don't be afraid to reach out for help, okay? Don't be afraid to reach out for help. That's what we're all here for. So that's the takeaway from this. Don't be that person that just walks by the person crying. Find out at least what's going on. If they choose to open up to you, cool. If not, you did your part. If you have things in your life that happen you know, outside of work, do what you need to do to get through it or to help each other get through it. I appreciate you guys letting me talk to you today and share my story, and I hope that I, I hope I gave you something to take away from this today. Thank you.